Hey y'all, this video is about role playing games and uh, right off the bat I'm going to say that if you only play role playing games and you never game master them, that for maximum game fun you should go watch another video and not watch this one because this is for game masters and how they can make the game more fun for everyone. So <clears throat> role playing games and Lovecraft stories particularly are full of super smart ancient races that are smarter than players. Even normal role playing games might have a genius wizard or someone, but that's the situation. You have people who are really smart in them. Now let's look at my upcoming adventure for D&D, Yig Snake Granddaddy. In this, we have four different alien races. We have, or not, they are all aliens, but you know, races. We have the Eremites, who are super smart wizards. We have the serpent men, we have the old ones, and we have the Yithians, the old ones, elder things, you know. Now, in D&D, and for that matter, Call of Cthulhu, your int is rolled on 3d6, so in theory, an average person is an int of like 9 to 12. PC is usually higher than this, but their maximum you usually roll is 18. Well, the Eremite and the Serpentman clock in at 18 on the average, and then the Elder Things and the Yithians are like 23, so these are super intelligent beings. Now, while role-playing players may be smarter than the average person, this still leaves you with a problem. How do you, as a Game Master, run a super smart enemy and have it seem that way to the players. It's easy to have an enemy that's stronger or faster or more numerous, but smarter? An enemy especially that might be smarter than I am? How do I portray this? How do I make him seem smart? And that's what this is about. How to pull off that trick so the players think the aliens are smart. First off, it's okay to take a super smart foe off his guard once in a while, especially if he's powerful or arrogant. Now, remember that if he's actually smart and it's not just college learning, that he should be able to react to these things quickly and recover from it. He's not just always surprised and arrogant. Arrogance is actually not a feature of being super smart. Another thing to remember is that being super smart doesn't always mean you can react really fast. You may have a, something you go to that's fairly quick, but you might take a little while to think about things. So that's okay. Sometimes if the players can do something quickly for the super smart guy figure something out, that can work and they can sort of get an edge on him, even though his response is, might be devastating. So that's the first thing to remember about super smart enemies. Now, here are some general tips that you can always use. So, they should always know when the players are approaching. And they should always be able to instantly identify any equipment the players have. Just because they know when enemies would be coming, what kind of things they, they have, they may identify the actual equipment. They should know all about the PCs. The PCs should have no secrets from these guys depending on how smart they are. If they're human level genius, maybe they can keep something secret. If they're really high, even if they have a secret thing in the back of their, in the back of their pants, the enemy's gonna say, hmm, he might have a secret thing in the back of his pants because he's super smart. That's the point, right? So nothing surprises him. He's got a response for that. An old game master trick is to, when you give the players a puzzle or a problem, they will discuss possibilities. So you listen to them and you think of what they're doing, you think of responses to what they're doing so that Enemy should always know what they're planning, and you can do this if you listen. Now, uh, sometimes players will uh, discuss, I mean, they'll try to find ways around this, but my experience is I've been playing with my game mastering group for like 25 years, and they still discuss things openly in front of me and let me hear, listen in on it, so if I can do it, you can too. The players are gonna sometimes surprise you as the game master. If they pull off a coup like this, Think on your feet. Something like an Elder Thing or a Yithian should always have a contingency plan. It's okay for you as the Game Master to essentially pull something out of your ass to help you with this thing. Oh, well yes, well I always had this teleporting thing that brings in a big monster to help me fight just in case of this. You know, something like that. Um, remember, a teleporting dinosaur or a secret door is okay because they're super intelligent. They planned ahead for this. If the players can pull something out of their out of their hats, you can too. Another thought is when the players do some kind of big surprise thing, that might be a really good time for you, the game master, to take a pee break or a drink break and like think about something you can do. 
and take a little moment to get it. That'll actually give the appearance super intelligence because they did their thing and you have, to, the, the monster's responding fast in seconds, presumably, but you, the game master, because you like went to the bathroom for a little bit to shelter yourself, have several minutes to like, what can I do, what can I do? So, you'll so your response will be, take time for to figure out, but in the game terms, it'll only be a few seconds for the Ithian to figure out his response. So that also helps. Now, if the enemy is beaten, which obviously should happen at times, one thing you can do, and this is a little harder, take some planning maybe for next week, have that work somehow into the evil plan. You've all seen it in bad or sometimes good movies where, aha, I planned all along that you would defeat me. You've fallen into my trap. Because it's all part of the plan. Figure out some way that the player's success can fall into his trap. You may have to hold off on this till next week, like after they think they've had their victory over the bad guy, then you say, okay, good work, guys. See you next Friday. And then next Friday, you've thought about, it, ah, I figured out how this works for the bad guy, how this can fall into his trap. Maybe you can't always pull that off, but quite often you can. When you think of the uh, uh, ways that it's been done in films and stories, you should probably figure some way that this is his plan. And that will make him seem smart. And the players say, oh man, we fell for him. This is a hard enemy to beat, which is what you want them to think. Because you want the enemy to seem hard to beat, not because he's strong. I mean, he could be strong, but because he is brainy. He should defeat them in a brainy way. Now, super intelligent enemies should rarely fall into a player's trap or ambush. Okay, the players may lead things for them to fall into. They shouldn't fall into that. They should mostly, I mean, maybe every once in a while, if you think it's a really clever ambush, you can reward them by letting them fall into it. But in general, you should have the enemy be able to predict and tell what's going on and say, oh, and then you said, if you know it's a trap, you know, you know the super enemy is a trap. And even if the enemy does fall for the trap, it may be in some way that hurts the players. He's got some other plan aligned, you know, like, aha, I send guys into the ambush and they start shooting at me with their bows or whatever, guns or whatever, but that was part of the plan so they wouldn't look behind him where I'm teleporting in uh, hunting horrors or other minions or demons or something. So that's a kind of thing you can do. Essentially, what I say is you would ignore any kind of surprise die roll against these guys because they're always kind of expecting it. They're ready for what's going to happen. I mean, they're super intelligent. Right? I mean, yes, I guess a dog can surprise you once in a while, but usually you're able to outthink your dog, right? Now, this doesn't mean the players can't win against these super intelligent guys. Humans can be defeated by things that are a lot dumber than we are. We can be defeated by wolf packs. We can be defeated by army ants. We can be defeated by crocodiles. So it's okay for someone who is less smart to beat the enemy, the arch enemy. What I'm trying to say is that the goal of all this stuff, listening in on the players, planning ahead, not letting them be surprised, letting them know what the players have, having them pull random things out of the air. This is all part and parcel of having the players feel when they beat them, because that's really the ultimate goal, the players not to be all be killed and have a party slaughter. You're trying to have them win and have a good feeling. They feel they beat someone that was smarter than them. That's a good feeling. He was smarter, but we got him. And that's the thing you're trying to pull off. So make sure that they beat them by techniques that would probably work if you were an animal going against a human. Being faster, being tougher, being meaner, not tricking them. And that's my advice for you to play a super intelligent enemy. Have fun.